Thank you, sir. <clears throat> How are you, sir? I'm good, sir. Uh, where do you stay? Sir, currently I am staying here in Delhi for the preparation. Otherwise, I stay in Pithoragarh itself. Pithoragarh, that's right. Did you schooling from Dehradun? Sir, till class 10th, I've studied in Pithoragarh and 11th and 12th from Wellam Girls School in Dehradun. Dehradun. And this your MBBS course? Sir, this also from Dehradun, Himalayan Institute of Medical Sciences. Uh, it's in proper Dehradun or something? Sir, it's in uh, Jolly Grant, uh, 30 kilometers from Dehradun. Jolly Grant, near the airport? Yes, sir. It's a newly established uh, college? Sir, no, the college was uh, established in 1995. However, uh, the change in certain regulatory guidelines and now it has been uh, re-established in 2012 under the but new But I think it was some other name was there previously? So previously it was called as HIHT, Himalayan Institute and Hospital Trust. And now the name has been changed to Swami Rama Himalayan University. Achha, okay. Tell me something about your this uh, fingerprinting pattern and blood group. What is so this? this was a research project that we did as a part of uh, forensic medicine, wherein we studied the fingerprint patterns and correlation between the blood group of 100 students of the 2013 batch. And the findings that we got were that uh, the loop pattern of fingerprint is uh, more common in the people with AB blood group, whereas uh, the arch pattern is common in A blood group. And also the other finding that we found was that loop is prevalent in maximum number of people, whereas arches is the pattern which is prevalent in least number of people. So further research has been done on this? So and we could not follow it up because it was a... a we had certain constraints with regard to... But any idea whether some research has gone into by some other institutes? Sir, a lot of places research has been done on the similar topic, but no mm. statistically significant correlation as of now has been found. Uh, each of the institution has been trying to uh, establish some significance, but no certain data is available. In this regard. What is royal disease? So, uh, if I am not mistaken, it refers to hemophilia. Hmm. Uh, which is a bleeding disorder uh, characterized by deficiency of factor 8 which is responsible for clotting of the blood. As a result of the deficiency of factor 8, there is a prolonged bleeding in a patient which can also result in death. It is known as royal because uh, in the British time, Queen Victoria is said to have this disease. Inherited. Yes. Hmm. Sir. Inheritance. Okay. And we celebrated this some word hemophilic day? Yes, sir, Th we do. Three days back. Yes. Hmm. Medical education, uh, is a state subject? So, education at, per, uh, per se is in the concurrent list and medical education is also the part of the central government's prerogative. So, mnemonic device, have you heard of that? Mm, yes, sir. Mm, what is it? So, it is a device to produce sound. If I, I'm not sure, sir. So, uh, have you heard of Vibgyor? Vibgyor? Yes, sir. Hmm. So, is it with regard to the spectrum of ah. light? We have different colors. Of so, that is the abbreviation we remember. Hmm? We remember why we have this abbreviation? So, because of the arrangement in the wavelength. Ah, so, we, we can remember the names. Yes, sir. So, that is the device that you do, do something to remember the names, like abbreviations. Okay. Hmm? Yes, sir. Can you give me some other example? One of these remembering name. Yes, sir. Hmm. So, similar examples of ah. mnemonics. Something connected with spelling, we remember something else. So, I'm sorry. Like I'm not weak, sure. weak and weak. You know, weak, there yes. are two different spellings are there. Yes, sir. So, how do we remember that? W E K, W E A K. Yes, sir. If it is double, it means it is strong. It can't be that weak. Yes, sir. Hmm? Okay. <clears throat> ecosystem types. So, ecosystem can be classified on the basis of uh, whether uh, it is, it could be a species-based ecosystem. Just tell me what types of ecosystems. So, I'm sorry. I can... Diksha. Yes. Sir. Can you tell me about uh, Pitorgar district? So, Pithoragarh is a hilly district present in the northeastern part of the state of Uttarakhand. It shares its borders with the uh, two neighboring countries, which is uh, China and Nepal. It is uh, famous for its calm, serene atmosphere and scenic beauty. And 
it hosts a number of pilgrimage places which are a tourist attraction such as patal bhubaneswar tharchura etc okay uh, you're a doctor yes uh, what do you bring to administration uh, from being a doctor so as we have seen with the recent covid-19 pandemic that the knowledge of health is very important with regard to administration so if i am given an opportunity i believe that i can work towards the upgradation of the health infrastructure in the country uh, more specifically uh, with regard to the challenges that we have for example uh, the lack of tra train manpower or the rural urban divide because i have a better understanding of the system so that is the primary area that i can work with what do you understand about uh, telemedicine and what are the advantages and disadvantages of telemedicine so telemedicine refers to uh, utilization of uh, ict devices for uh, bringing about the healthcare especially to the rural and far off places so uh, the other aspect that how it is helpful uh, it is helpful in the regard that uh, one we are able to better utilize our resources especially with india where we have a crunch of doctors at present and other paramedic staff so second advantage is it also helps in evidence based decision making and uh, it can also help uh, the timely healthcare can be provided with the help of telemedicine and government is currently working in this regard limitations so limitations with regard to india is most importantly the lack of infrastructure because internet connectivity is very limited here so the approach is a little problematic also the integration because the manpower is not trained in a way that they are able to uh, so we need both trained personnel at one end and the other who is able to understand so that kind of synergy needs to be brought in so you said the evidence based consulting yes sir but in physical consulting compared to telemedicine you have the ability to gauge the disease of the person better yes sir so don't you think evidence based uh, what do you call decision making is one of the shortcomings of telemedicine so i said it as an advantage because uh, we are able to better record the data whereas in physical consultation generally the doctor would uh, forget or the data would get lost in time uh, whereas in, if we are using the telemedicine services we can also record the data so it helps in correlation of the disease in a particular area is why is practical application of ai in healthcare mm -hmm. cases where it is already being applied so ai can be used for a diagnosis of a number of diseases especially uh, cancers uh, is one particular area where we are using it apart from that health conditions such as skin diseases where it is most prominently being used so uh, apart from that uh, we can also use uh, ai in the treatment of diseases same as it goes for telemedicine that in the far off places we can utilize it for the treatment part do you think uh, in 10 15 20 years uh, the profession of the doctor would uh, be completely different and it will decline with the rise of technology so i don't think it will decline uh, it will get either more amplified i would say because technology cannot work without a human expertise so we will always need certain guidance from the trained professionals who will be able to direct in which way the technology has to be used uh, with respect to doctors uh, gaining education abroad especially in in uh, cis countries yes how do you look at this like you know how, are these doctors trained to work in india and what kind of challenges do we have so the primary reason why doctors are going abroad uh, first is for the medical education because we have less number of colleges and medical seats and there are more number of applicants also the fee issue which is high in india and less abroad so the challenges when they come back to working is one that the curriculum is a little different what is taught in the west and uh, the european countries and the diseases that are more prevalent in the indian setup so that is one second with regard to the adjustment with infrastructure because uh they are known to have better advanced facilities so they are more equipped to work in that environment which is not available currently in indian setup okay ayush medicine is uh, only popular in india or there are certain segments of ayush medicine which is popular globally also so ayush is an integrated term uh, where uh, ayurveda and yoga are primarily and siddha which is derived from the indian has the indian origin whereas if we talk about yunani then it is more common in central asian countries it has a persian arabic origin whereas homeopathy is very common in germany so it is a system that is prevalent across the world and is being practiced currently in different okay. forms uh letter writing yes do you think the art of letter writing is lost certainly so i believe that it has been lost in time because of the advent of technology we are now uh, more focused with using whatsapp or text messages because we believe it's more faster 
However, I am of the opinion that uh, we need to restore the usage of letter writing more uh, than reliance on text or uh, other forms of message. What has been the impact of uh, texting and SMSing and WhatsApp on language? So, a new uh, language has come up, which is a uh, which is not very formal, it's a informal jargon that we use in the text messaging. So sometimes uh, it, there is a problem that we are not able to rightly communicate what we would want to uh, with the usage of such kind of language. Whereas if I compare it with how in uh, we go with the letter writing, therein we use a more uh, systematic form of language that is uh, more easily understood, has more of affection uh, with regard to whatever we would want to convey and there is more clarity as well. Last question. Can you name some prominent freedom fighters who are known for letter writing? So the one that I can remember now is Jawaharlal Nehru. Uh, he wrote uh, the letters to Indira Gandhi. So uh, Gandhi ji also has been known to write letters. So, I am not able to. Okay. What is an inland letter? So, inland letter is a letter which is written within the country. Uh, the postal department issues in inland and we can write a letter to Thra. What is the cost usually of inland letter? So, I am not aware because not aware. So, how do you practice uh, letter writing? So, I generally write letters to friends and family uh, for special occasions or if I have, I would want to express certain thoughts. I tend to write it in a piece of paper and also because I do a little bit of painting. So, I try and create more borders and make it more personal. And I just generally send it by an envelope. That is envelope. Yes. What is the cost uh, of stamp that is put on an envelope? So uh, I purchase uh, ten stamps for uh, five rupees. That is what I've got. So fifty rupees. Yes. Are you sure that much is required? So that is the last that I paid for. So. Okay. Uh, do you think the postal department has kept up with the private sector courier services? So there are challenges because postal delivery has been known to be delayed and uh, many a times that uh, the letters don't reach on time. So we have had the advent of private courier services that are coming up. In this regard, I think uh, more upgradation needs to be done with the way postal department has been functioning so that uh, both uh, government as well as the private sector are able to deliver similar services. Okay. How is postal department gearing up for the e-commerce services? So, I'm not aware of the specifics, but uh, probably that uh, certain items they can attach to the e-commerce giants and deliver items. Okay, all right. Uh, you also do aerobics. Yes. Is there any difference between Pilates and aerobics? So, Pilates is, uh, aerobics is more of the exercise that involves cardiomuscular uh, activity, whereas Pilates is more of muscle strengthening. And aerobics has more element of music in that, whereas uh, Pilates uh, differs in this regard that less music is utilized there. The Zumba is also becoming popular. Yes. How is it different from aerobics or same genre? So the difference between aerobics and Zumba lies more the, in the fact that Zumba traces its origin from the Latin American dance form. So it has more of dancing, uh, the dance music coordination, whereas aerobics does not have that dance music coordination. All right. So you have achieved a distinction in microbiology also in your college. Yes. Are we uh, heading towards the end game of COVID-19? So as of now, I am not in a state to say that we are uh, towards the end of COVID-19 because we have recently seen a number of variants and mutants that are coming up. But we are certainly better equipped with how we will be able to deal with it and also that the level of immunization and resistance in the community has increased. So maybe in next two to three years, we are able to cope up and it will become like a normal common cold that we have is what I can say. So generally the virus mutates and becomes more mild or more stronger? So it cannot be said with certainty because mutation is not known that what sort of a mutation will happen. If the mutation tends to increase its potency, it might become dangerous. It can also become milder with time. Okay, all right. Uh, Pithoragar, how well is it connected to the other uh, cities of Uttarakhand? So in the recent times, the connectivity has certainly improved, but compared to the other places that we have in Uttarakhand, the connectivity is still an issue. The only major means of communication that we have is the roadways. There is an on and off airline service that is functional in this city, but uh, it is not as frequent as we would expect it to be. Which is the nearest airport to Pithoragar? So Pantnagar airport is a recent airport, which is almost 200 kilometers from the city. And the nearest railway station? 
So it's the Kargodam railway station at Haldwani. So it falls in the Kumao region, right? Yes, sir. What is the cultural difference between Kumao and Gadwal regions? So there are a lot of practices that uh, primarily differ in the Kumao and Gadwal region. First is the language. We tend to speak Kumaoni and uh, there is Gadwali that's widely prevalent. A lot of festivals that are celebrated in Kumao are not as common as in Gadwal. For example, uh, we have the Harela festival or we have the Hill Jatra which is common. We have a Chaliya dance which is common. So other thing would be uh, with regard to paintings like the Appan painting is a common form which is practiced in Kumao but not in Gadwal. Certain traditional distinctions, for example, women tend to wear uh, Rangali Pichwada, which is not seen in Gadwal region. So, these are some of the prominent differences. Okay, last question. Uh, what are the challenges with respect to health insurance in India? So, there are two major challenges with health insurance. One is the uh, ability of government to provide that because uh, right now that has not been the primary focus of the government. Uh, second would be the acceptability of people because people are also not very aware and uh, they are not at present in a state to accept it. So, I believe these are the two major challenges. That Why and the government is having Ayushman Bharat? So, the aim of Ayushman Bharat is to provide, uh, is to reduce the out of pocket expenditure that the people face, uh, especially with regard to tertiary, secondary and tertiary care. It is a form of health insurance as you have mentioned, but it is still functioning in the limited capacity catering only to the poorer sections of the society and not all inclusive scheme. I think there is one more issue with regard to health insurance which is they generally demand hospitalization. Yes. But now since due to the evolving technologies we have only few hours of daycare procedures yes. right. So how is that, that getting addressed? So uh, I'm not sure of the specifics but what I can remember is uh, for example we have included mental health as an aspect in insurance. So mental health uh, a lot of times the treatment does not require hospitalization. Uh, so that is one step that we are taking towards addressing this problem. Um, others I'm not aware of the exact. Right. Do you think that the women officers in civil services face some sort of an implicit bias? Ma'am, the bias is with regard to how the society accepts because uh, in the form that we have been very used to seeing male officers, so that is one challenge that female officers face. Second is with regard to how uh, there is a lack of infrastructure facilities, uh, for example, facilities of toilets or uh, proper facilities so that they can accommodate with their spouse or family responsibilities also that they have. So, those are certain challenges I believe that the officers, female officers face in the service. Okay. Uh, do you think uh, there has been a, some sort of a lack of synergy between the uh, state and the civil society which is hindering uh, in achieving some sort of a, a more transformative uh, agenda or a more transformative uh, change? Ma'am, certainly there are some hiccups that keep occurring uh, in between um, within the state and the civil society, mainly with regard to how the reg civil societies are regulated. For example, in the recent times we saw that there was amendment brought to the FCRA Act. But at the same time, we have also seen coordination between the state and civil society. If I can cite an example of the midday meal scheme where the state has been working with uh, Akshay Patra Foundation and they have been working together. So. I believe that if the two organizations are able to come together, we will be able to better achieve our targets uh, compared to the present level. Okay. Uh, what other ways can you suggest in order to bridge this gap? Ma'am, the other ways that could be is uh, with regard to civil societies would be that uh, we are able to uh, bring in more understanding uh, between the, the, there needs to be more dialogue between the government and the civil society with regard to the demands that they address. Uh, and also a targeted approach wherein uh, specific sectors are targeted, for example, uh, health or education, wherein the two can work together for better delivery of services. Okay. What do you understand by bioterrorism? Ma'am, bioterrorism refers to usage of uh, biological weapons such as bacteria, virus, fungus, etc. that can uh, result in uh, diseases in a large percentage of population and it can be a form of terrorism because uh, it can result in massive death and destruction to the recipient country or the population. Yeah. 
Was coronavirus uh, an example of bioterrorism? Ma'am, as of today, I cannot say if it was a bioterrorism because uh, the investigation with regard to how it specifically came in the society or across the world is still undergoing. But uh, something like this could be a bioterrorism, uh, a weapon of bioterrorism, like usage of a virus could be a bioterrorism weapon. Uh, your understanding about Ayushman Bharat Digital Mission, what is it? Ma'am, uh, Ayushman Bharat Digital Mission is a recently launched mission by the government of India, which uh, aims at creation of digital health IDs, uh, a digital repository of the healthcare practitioners and the hospitals that are available across the country with the aim of better delivery of healthcare services in a sense that it will work towards evidence-based policy making and better utilization of healthcare resources. Uh, last question to you. Uh, so, as civil servants, uh, there has been a lot of uh, debate and a lot of tension that you see between the medical officers in a district and the DM. Do you think uh, you coming from a background of the medical profession, uh, uh, what are your views on the uh, DM sort of exercising an excessive power over medical officers uh, in the garb of healthcare? Because at times the medical officers can better understand the situation. DM is sitting in his office or even if he's on field visits. But the point is that the medical officers are on the location and they are dealing it on a day-to-day -day basis. So they somehow dictate the terms on the medical officers. Do you think they hinder the uh, efficiency of the doctors and as a, as a consequence also hinder the overall health care in the district as district magistrates? Ma'am, it is true that uh, the medical officers of somebody from a medical background has better understanding of how the healthcare system works. But the district magistrate is certainly not a hindrance to the work because uh, the facilities of the infrastructure with the working of the hospitals or recruitment, etc., has to be done by an administrative authority, not the district magistrate per se, but the administration at large. There are certain cases where uh, there is a tussle that happens over uh, infrastructure or regulatory issues. But in my opinion, the two should work together because uh, they will uh, certainly bring a synergy in the working and will enhance the outcome of the working. Thank you. Okay, Diksha, your interview is over.